I think a lot of people are like, oh, I don't have time to tidy. Well, I realized I didn't have time to not tidy. I did not have time to not learn how to maintain a clean house because it took up so much more time and energy surviving a messy environment. Am I a perfectly clean and tidy person? No, no, far from. But I'm so much better at keeping my space clean than I used to be. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you how I went from being a messy babe to a tidy, clean, bougie babe. I need to clean this flat, so I figured you could do it with me. I've become a much tidier, cleaner person. That has been intentional. Now my flat at the moment, it's not crazy messy because I don't really let it get to crazy mess. And I'm gonna explain how I do that during this video. If you're someone like me who has been naturally a messy person and you don't wanna be anymore because it's actually really time consuming and inconvenient, then fear not, because I'm gonna tell you how I changed and how I believe everyone can change too. If you want, if you want. And I think it also starts as well with believing that you can. I'm a big believer in having a growth mindset in this life. So not being like, oh, this is just who I am and being like, no, I get to decide who I am. So yes, I used to be a messy person, but I decided I didn't like being a messy person. And now guess what? I am a tidy person because I decided I'm going to be a tidy, neat freak kind of gal. And I love it. That said, I should probably show you around the flat. It's not in an insane condition right now. It just needs a deep clean. So I had a flat party on Saturday, which was so much fun. And then I had my cousins round the next day. Um, I was doing their hair. I was doing a lot of different things. We had food. And while we did tidy up afterwards, I didn't really do a deep clean. So there's just things everywhere. My flowers need refreshing, which is perfect because my amazing family got me some beautiful flowers, which I want to put out. The bins are overflowing, the floor is dirty, the fridge is full of gone off food and we just need to tidy up a bit and I also have some laundry to do. I would love if you would like and subscribe. This is a new kind of video so if you want more clean with me videos then let me know. I'm not like a fully domesticated housewife but I'm like I think I'm a really golden era of like bougie babe meets future housewife. I'm in that golden age where I do a lot, but I never do too much. So maybe some of my cleaning and life hacks will be pleasant to you. Let me know if so. Okay, without further ado, let's get cleaning. I'm gonna start off by just putting some laundry to dry because that's the most urgent thing. Always do the most urgent thing first because if I don't hang this laundry, then it's gonna sit on itself while wet and start to smell. And then I'll have to redo the laundry. So by not doing it first, I'll be creating more work for myself. I'm gonna talk about step one of how I became a more tidy person. The first thing I did was to make it a priority. I realized I just was losing time by being messy. I feel like my environment can distract me quite a lot. And so if I'm constantly having to pause and tidy or being distracted by the mess in my space, then I actually ended up losing more time stressing about mess than if I invested the time into becoming a cleaner and more efficient person in how I maintain my space. Making it a priority and for me realizing that it was actually holding me back in life, like not being able to consistently like put my clothes away or just stupid little things was stopping me from getting things done, you know? Getting home from work and then you're either spending all of your time like reorganizing things or trying to avoid being home because your home is so messy so you just don't wanna be there. That is expensive. It's expensive in terms of your energy, your emotions, your time. It can be expensive like literally, like if you don't know where all your stuff is in your house, I would find that sometimes I would buy things more than once because I just wasn't organized and didn't know I already had three little shakers worth of salt but because things were messy and weren't organized I would buy something again so it's quite literally very expensive to be a messy person I just decided I have to make this a priority as I said I'm a big believer in the fact that we get to choose who we are in this life I think a lot of people myself included at different stages in life we don't take full advantage of that power that we can literally determine who we are and we can just say oh I'm a messy person that's who I've always been that's who I always will be and it's like who told you that like why do you believe that where did that belief come from just because you've behaved in a messy way for the first 20 years of your life 
doesn't mean you have to carry on doing that for the next 80 years of your life. Do you know what I mean? Like humans are capable of growth and change. I am capable of growth and change. And so I really just made it a priority. I was like, I don't want to be a messy kind of gal. Like I had friends who were super organized, like super had their life together. And you know, whenever you go to a friend's house and it's just absolutely immaculate. And I was like, hey, I kind of want to be that gal. I want to be that gal who keeps a uh, tidy house, but not just for other people, like for me, because I'm tired of my space making me feel overwhelmed and frustrated and sad. Like I'm quite an emotionally affected person sometimes, like I can be very sensitive. And so if my space is saying bad things to me, like I feel that. I think a lot of people are like, oh, I don't have time to tidy. Well, I realized I didn't have time to not tidy. I did not have time to not learn how to maintain a clean house because it took up so much more time and energy surviving a messy environment. So yeah, that's the first step. Realize that it is way more expensive, both physically and emotionally to survive a messy environment than it is to create a tidy one. Laundry, done, kind of. I'll put another batch on. The next thing I'm gonna sort out will be the dining room table, just cause I think it makes such a big difference. It's a real staple of the living area. I analyzed what is mess and why am I messy? Now, mess is basically when things aren't where they're supposed to be. That is literally all it is, right? You've got some stuff and it's not in the place where it's supposed to be. And so as I thought about this, I realized you can't have mess if you don't have any stuff. Like if my house was empty, if I owned nothing, it would not be messy because there would be nothing to create mess. And so the next thing I did was I just got rid of a load of stuff. That's not really worth saving, is it? I got rid of so much stuff, just had a massive clear out where I was like, okay, I don't need this, I don't need that. And was incredibly harsh with myself and about it. I think that we all have lived in an incredibly consumerist society where we're constantly encouraged to just have more, do more, have more, do more. And you know, I've been a victim of that. I've also been a perpetrator of that. So I'm not blaming anyone, um, but I think it, it does us some good to take a step back, look at the stuff we have and be like, do I actually need this? Like, when did I last wear this dress? When it comes to getting rid of things, sometimes we can be nervous and say, oh, but if I get rid of this thing, I'm just gonna have to buy it again and that will be expensive. And which can be true, you know, things do cost money and so just throwing things away, it can feel like a risk because what if we need them again? It's important to realize that actually holding on to stuff costs something too. So holding on to that closet full of clothes that you no longer wear because they no longer fit you, but you're planning that one day they will fit you again, that costs something. It costs something in terms of space. Like people literally pay millions, if not billions of pounds every year for storage, for space to keep things. Like storage is a cost. You keeping things in your house is costing you money, whether it's on rent, mortgage, whatever it is, there is a cost for that space but also it has a cost emotionally and psychologically. You are hanging on to these things. It's costing you now, sis. Like it's costing you now to hold on to those items. So yeah, doing a massive clear out was really, really helpful for me. I've moved a fair amount like over the last few years in terms of I've probably moved at least once every two years, which I know for some people isn't a lot, but as you get older, I think you kind of crave a bit more stability. Um, but I've moved around and each time I move around, there's like an opportunity to do another clear out, right? And to be like, okay, what do I want? What don't I want? What am I keeping? What am I getting rid of? So just the thought that actually you can't have mess if you don't have any stuff. So if you're really struggling to be tidy, one of the best things that you can do is to just get rid of stuff. You can have things on the floor, but if there are fewer things on the floor, the place will feel less messy. Get rid of things that don't bring you joy, that you don't use. For me, I was like, why do I still have it? Can I gift that to someone else and pass on the blessing? Just completely decluttering. Having a minimalist mindset is the first step. So this table is from Ikea, actually. And it's an amazing table, oh my goodness, for hosting. It seats like 10 to 12 people. 12 at a push, 10 comfortably. I prefer to keep it like heart extended, not fully extended just because of the size of my living thing. I think, I think when it's fully extended, oh my goodness. Ugh. 
<laughs> when it's fully extended, it does just take up that little bit too much room. But then when it's fully closed, I find it a little bit too small and it leaves a bit too much space. And I do prefer the look of when it's set up for, um, for people to sit around it. A really good hack that I've got for like extendable tables is just going, well, it's not even a hack. I don't know why I said that, but using a bench is so great because I don't have to have all these extra chairs when it's not extended. And I can put these in the entrance way as a little bench for when people come in for them to sit on and take their shoes off. So it always has use and it's never in the way, which is great. The third thing I did or the third big change I made is that I organized my home, but I don't organize it like the people on the internet. <laughs> I don't organize my home in like an aesthetically pleasing way. I am not one of those girls. and I truly don't ever see myself becoming one of those girls who pours their cereal into a jar or their oats into a jar. Maybe when you're a mother or whatever, maybe that's better. But for me right now, it doesn't make sense. I like to see my expiry dates. I like to see all the information that comes on packaging. Unless I have a refillable container that I can take to the shop and refill it and bring it home, I do not see how it helps to empty out containers into containers. But maybe I've missed something there. Um, so yeah, when I say that I organized my home, if you look in these cupboards, they are not that aesthetically pleasing, but what they are is incredibly convenient and intuitive. When I talk about home organization, it will change depending on each person. So what I did was I look at my natural habits. What are my natural tendencies? What do I usually do and not do? And I make my home fit around that rather than making myself fit around my home. So I place all of the things that I need to wash my face at a really convenient right by the sink location. This means that instead of me having to go in the drawer, get out my face wash, use it, put it back in the drawer, I anticipate that that would be adding extra work for me. And instead, my face wash is out right where I need to use it. And so I set up my environment, I organize my environment in terms of where I keep things. I keep them much closer to me the more frequently that I use them. So anything that I use frequently will be within arm's reach. So that means that, for example, my makeup drawer, instead of me having to get my makeup out, do my makeup, put it back, Actually, I keep it all in a really easy to use place so that I'm not creating extra work for myself. So home organization, I think that honestly needs a whole video in itself because it's hard to explain on here and I think I'd have to go through individual things. But just making things convenient for you, not aesthetic. It's not about making it pretty. It's about making it easy and convenient. That is a huge step. This leads me on to the next step I took to become more tidy, and that was to anticipate my own laziness. Just accept who I am. Yes, I have this growth mindset, but I also have to start where I am and work my way from there. I'm not just gonna boom, change overnight. And so a big part of me becoming a tidier, cleaner person was to accept and anticipate the places and times where I know I can be lazy. So a great example of this is when it comes to laundry. So you guys have just seen me hang out some clothes to dry. Now, what would happen in the past when I was really messy is that I would put clothes out to dry. They would be dry. I wouldn't have time to fold them and put them away straight away. So I would dump them on the end of my bed or on the chair in my room. I would then have a pile of building up clothes on the chair in my room or on the end of my bed. Then when it comes time to sit down on that chair to read my Bible in the morning, the chair isn't free. And so then maybe I move them onto my bed. And then when it comes time to going to bed, there's loads of clothes on my bed and that mess just creates more mess. Mess begets mess. No matter how much I say to myself, oh, well, I'll just fold my laundry and put it away straight away, that is simply not going to happen. Now you might be saying, Sarah, why? That's so easy, don't be so lazy. But actually, I think there's something about just anticipating and accepting that we have other stuff going on. So for me, for example, I've done laundry today, but actually I do have acting class tonight and I know that I won't get back from acting class until quite late. I'm not gonna stay up late folding laundry just to keep a, a tidy house. So the solution that I came up with was to, oh, how cute are these placemats, by the way? They're so cute, the little farm animals. The solution I came up with was to get some big wicker baskets that I love the look of. They look really cute and I dump my laundry in there, which I know it sounds really stupid. It's still technically mess, but it's contained mess, it's organized mess. So all of my clean clothes I know are in this basket in my room. 
So even though the ideal would be for them to be put away, at least they're not slowly growing or merging or moving from chair to bed to bed to chair. At least they are just in this basket. And then when I do have time, whether that's two days from now or two weeks from now, I can fold them and put them away. So planning for my own laziness has genuinely been life-changing. You can choose the lazy way to do things. Being lazy is actually quite smart sometimes. You can conserve your energy for other things. You don't have to be this hyper sprung person who's always like, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. No, that's really tiring and exhausting and really hard and unrealistic. So yeah, for me, anticipating that I feel lazy sometimes and I don't always wanna do things straight away and planning for that um, has been super duper helpful. I recognized that key things that would lead to the deterioration of my home. One of the big things for that was laundry. When I would do laundry and clothes would build up and they would just be all over my room, it would just lead to like a cycle of events of me just thinking, oh, everything's a mess and just letting it like get really bad. And another key event was emptying the dishwasher. If I don't empty the dishwasher, I'm very blessed to have a dishwasher, but if I don't empty it, then dirty dishes tend to pile up. Whereas if I take the five to 10 minutes that it takes to empty the dishwasher, then I can put dirty dishes in there and it doesn't tend to start that chain reaction of absolute mess. A dishwasher full of clean dishes was a catalyst for my flat just descending into mess or wherever I was living. Have a look through your usual patterns of behavior when you've done a deep clean in the past. What is it that usually takes your flat from being clean to messy? Like where does it start? Is there one moment that you can see, okay, yeah, it really went downhill after that. For example, if you go away, for me, that was another thing. When I go away, whether it's for a weekend or for two weeks, Weeks and I come back with a suitcase if I do not unpack that suitcase the place just deteriorates because I've got essential items in that suitcase right so if I haven't put them all back into their place and I'm constantly going to and from that suitcase and things tend to get really messy so just recognizing that there are certain patterns that we live by our mess is very predictable and so if we just take the time to pause step outside of ourselves and look in then it's a very predictable pattern of going from clean tidy house to messy house um, and that will change per person like it might be for you that actually when you are really busy you tend to get even more messy well look into that more deeply like what is it about your busyness that doesn't allow you to be tidy and maybe there are other things that you can cut out when you have busy periods that will allow you to maintain a tidy environment despite being busy so for example I recognize that when I'm more busy, I don't have as much time to be tidying, but because I know that having a messy environment is a huge disadvantage to me, and it's not something that I can be productive within, what I choose to do then is to take time from other things. So if I know things are gonna be busy, then I will anticipate that I'm not gonna have time to cook. So instead of it being that I'm cooking and I don't have time to clean up after it, I just tell myself, I don't have time to cook. If I don't have time to clean up after cooking, I don't have time to cook. And I will say this is a busy period, so for this busy period, I'm gonna have a few fresh ready meals instead. Preempt that, and I'm not gonna let it get to the fact like, oh, well I cooked, but I was too busy to clean. It's like, actually that's one package. It's actually really obvious when we pause and look, it's like, oh, it was really predictable that my flat would be a mess because this and that was going on in my life in that season. And so what can I do to anticipate that and plan ahead in those moments? And then another thing that I have done and you can do to help yourself be a tidier, cleaner person is to design an environment that you actually like. The steps I've told you so far should reduce the amount of work that it takes to maintain a clean environment. But even then, it's still gonna take a little bit of time. And anything that takes time and effort it's always easier to do when you actually feel motivated to do it. One thing I recommend is that you make your environment, your flat, your room, whatever it is that you're living at the moment that keeps getting messy, I recommend that you take the time to transform it into a space that you actually love, that you actually enjoy. So when your room, flat, house is tidy, do you actually like it when it's tidy? If not, try to do little things to make it something that you actually like so that the end result of tidying will be something you enjoy. So hang up a picture that makes you feel good. Redecorate, move items around. Just make the space something that you love because if the finished result is something that's appeasing to you and something that you desire, you'll feel more inspired to get there. Whereas for me, when I've lived in environments that I don't even find pretty anyway, I have a real low motivation to clean because it's like you can do all 
all the cleaning you want and it's still a hole, right? So maybe what you do need to do is do a fresh lick of paint on the walls or whatever it is that makes your home feel more inviting and, and gives you a certain level of like pride in it and happiness within those four walls. It doesn't have to cost you a bomb, but it could be different things like making your own artwork to hang up, moving furniture around, removing stains from certain items, like just put in a little bit of effort into your space and because the more that you like it, the more you'll be motivated to take a bit of pride in it. You don't have to break the bank, but see what little things you can do to change your home, to make it more aesthetically pleasing, and that will increase your motivation. Now this next tip is something which changed my life. Like genuinely, I still do it to this day, and I think it's probably the biggest thing for me that has helped me to become a really tidy person, and that was inviting people around into my space frequently. <laughs> So inviting people over, which can feel like a catch-21 because you might be watching this thinking, Sarah, my home is a mess. There is no way that I'm having people round. Like, I'm just not inviting anyone. They're not going to see this space. But I genuinely recommend that you invite people around for dinner anyway. <laughs> like, send them that message. Make a date. It's number one, that will add the pressure if you genuinely have too much shame to let people see your room, whether it's a studio or a house, no matter what space you're in, if you are too ashamed to have them see it messy, that will give you a lot of motivation to clean. <laughs> Cause you'll be like, oh my gosh, no one can know that I live like this. Putting a date in the diary where you're going to see someone and have someone around will motivate you to clean. But for me, putting that in the diary regularly helps me to keep the place tidy consistently because I've realized that I will do way more for other people than I do for myself. And that is quite true of all of us. You might be watching this thinking, yes, yeah, Sarah, I get what you mean. I know that like a tidy environment is better for me mentally and I'm more focused and at peace when my environment is tidy. But honestly, like I can manage without it. And I know that I will just put up and shut up with whatever mess that I allow myself to be in. Whereas actually most of us will do more for other people or more for what other people think of us, then we will do what we think of us and what we will do for ourselves. Like, we won't allow other people to tolerate as much mess sometimes, like other guests who we want to impress naturally as humans, you know, that instinct to be accepted and loved and um, wanted will make us make more effort to present a better version of ourselves to other people. Now, whether that's right or wrong, I think it's kind of irrelevant because it just is. And so for me, I like to use that to my advantage. I'm like, okay, I know that I will not have someone seeing my flat and mess. So if I have people coming around twice a week, then it means that I'm gonna make the effort to clean for when they come around. And if I clean for when they're around, that means it's gonna be clean for me, for when it's just me in the house as well. Creating that intentional social pressure of the fact that someone else is going to see my environment, like someone else is going to be here. That has really helped me to maintain a cleaner home more consistently. Like for example, today I'm in the house by myself, but I actually have friends coming around for dinner tomorrow. And also I have people coming around on Friday, um, staying till Saturday, and then people coming around on Sunday as well. So there's real motivation for me not to have overflowing bins and all of this mess around. Even if you're not able to get your house to a state where you feel happy inviting people around, I think invite someone close to you, who you trust, who you're comfortable with being vulnerable around, invite them around anyway. Because sometimes I think it's the stuff that we don't want to do, which will actually be the motivating discomfort in order for us to initiate change in our lives. And by shielding ourselves from that discomfort of having someone see that actually my, my house is a bit messy, we're also shielding ourselves from what would have put us outside of our comfort zone and motivated us or encouraged us or helped us in some way to make a change, a change that we actually wanted to be able to make. So I know that this can be a big thing and people can have different levels of comfort and shame with inviting other people into this space. Um, but if you're kind of teaching on the edge, I really recommend that you make that jump, invite someone around, set a date, know that date is coming and that will really help you to get your place in order for someone else if you won't do it for yourself. How gorgeous are these flowers? I'm just gonna arrange these into this vase.
I've had these sofas for coming up to two years now. It'll be two years and about three months. And I get stains on them all the time, makeup, all of that stuff. Now they are actually in pretty decent shape considering all I ever do is wipe them down with a damp cloth. Now <laughs> you're probably thinking, Sarah, you need to get these deep cleaned. I would agree. And I think I will get a deep clean of them done professionally on their two year anniversary. But for now, I'm just gonna stick with the tried and true method of wiping them down. And if there is a stain, like usually it's a makeup stain or something, I literally just put a bit of water and scrub it down. I don't use any kind of ugh, stain remover or anything. So I'm just a bit worried that it will like change the actual color of the sofa. So until I get it done professionally, I'll just keep doing this for now. And so far, so good, I think. So I am officially done cleaning for today and done with this video. Is the flat perfectly, spotlessly clean? No, it's not about living in a museum. It's just about allowing myself to live in a space where I can feel happy and less stressed. And yeah, I've learned to do that over the years and it's been a very slow process. So I did not do this overnight, going from being a messy babe to a tidy babe. But I have gone from being a messy babe to a tidy babe and it is a much less stressful existence. Having lived both, I can assure you of that. So yeah, I hope that you found this video interesting, satisfying, entertaining in some way, and yeah, hopefully a little bit helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If there's any other videos that you wanna see, then let me know and I will totally film them for you guys. I'm really loving just sharing more again. So yeah, thank you for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye. <laughs>have nothing to procrastinate with because everything is clean so I must do some actual work
Ah, crap.